Since the power radiated by the short dipole antenna is flowing in the r hat direction, radially away from the antenna, then if we integrate the power flowing radially through the surface of an imaginary sphere, we could choose any shape, but a sphere is convenient, surrounding the antenna at a constant radius, then we would know the total power being radiated by the antenna. We could choose a sphere of any size to calculate the total power flowing through it. And for convenience, it's nice to assume a radius of uh, one meter. In this case, then P radiated by the antenna, power, top power radiated by the antenna, we'd integrate from zero to pi, zero to two pi. We would take our S power density calculated at r equal 1, a function of r, phi, and theta, and dotted with r hat and integrated over s, so we have ds. Taking the dot product of s and r hat gives us the component of s flowing in the radial direction, which is what we want. Next, we need to define ds. ds needs to be the area of the infinitesimally small patches on a sphere that we want to integrate over. So ds here, we're going to have r d phi on one side and r sine theta d theta on the other side. So ds is r d phi times r sine theta d theta. Plugging in our expression here, s for our short dipole, and also here is ds, and also we can set, uh, we set r equal to 1 here. This is the p radiated expression that we want to evaluate. Now r hat, dotted with r hat, is going to give us just a value of 1. And then, after pulling out the constants, we're going to get 11.78 i naught l over lambda squared. And then we just integrate from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi, sine cubed. And the 0 to 2 pi d phi is the simpler one, because that's just equal to 2 pi. Uh, for the second integral, we're going to see this in the practice problem for this lecture. So here I'm just going to give it a 0 to pi sine cubed d theta is 4 thirds. Putting all this together, after we evaluate the integrals, we're going to get 98.7 i naught l over lambda squared. So what does this result tell us? Well, we can see that as the electrical length of the dipole, this L over lambda, so as L over lambda decreases, we can see that P radiated will also decrease. So this implies that a shorter dipole won't radiate as much power. For now, we've said that L over lambda at the beginning, we said it's equal to 0 0.01. So if we plug this in, we get P radiated is 0 0.00987 i naught squared. Okay, we just calculated the to total power radiated by the short dipole. But this number actually doesn't mean much if we don't know how it compares to the power delivered to the short dipole. So instead, what we are probably more interested in here is what's called the radiation in efficiency, psi of the antenna. The radiation efficiency, which we'll use psi, it describes how much of the power that is delivered to an antenna will be radiated by it. So we can define P radiated is equal to psi times PT. So I'm going to put a subscript here, total power supplied to the antenna, just so it's clear. And in this case, psi is defined as 
P radiated over P radiated plus P loss. In other words, the efficiency helps us to compare the power radiated by the antenna, P radiated, versus how much of the power is lost due to ohmic heating. There can be other losses as well, but we're going to focus on ohmic heating, uh, ohmic losses along the conductors. We already know P radiated, we calculated that. So in order to calculate the efficiency, we need to know P loss. Before we calculate P loss, since we're talking about power being dissipated and ohmic heating, which always makes me think of resistors, it might help to consider an equivalent circuit of the antenna. See if you can draw a generator connected to an antenna via a transmission line and draw the equivalent circuit for the generator and for the antenna in your diagram.